Does your Omer Invictus not have the M stamp from the recall update? Regardless of your preferred gun, do you want the most crisp trigger release on the market? If you're rocking a stock trigger, you're missing out. I'm going to show you exactly why. Just. Oh, poor no graphic. What's up, my dudes? I'm Andy. I have an 8 inch Shaka. The Omer Invictus. A frustrating reality in the spearfishing industry and a pain in my Ecole Puka. When Omer initiated the Invictus trigger recall for safety concerns, the updated triggers were stamped with an M, letting you know that you had the upgraded trigger mech. Omer directed you to bring the gun to your local distributor. In my case, that did me no good, and because I couldn't get a response from Omer, I decided to hook my buddy's gun up since I couldn't get his trigger replaced and fixed. And to be honest, it wasn't necessarily his trigger. It was his line release, which I did TIG weld and get it fixed, but even at that, it, it wasn't the same anymore. I'm gonna give a quick description at the end of this video, how I made this avatar handle fit the Invictus barrel. Let us bury the elephant in the room before it can even show up. Erms or Ermies? I really don't know. Google Translate doesn't help with that one. But I'm going to choose the one with only one syllable because it's easier. The Erms Avatar Handle. Versatile, clean, and butt loaded with additional options and attachment points. I've got an Erms 25 meter reel. Looks slick. Right hander thumb rest. Camera mounting holes for their Erms camera mount. Uh, all of which Erm sells on their website, which I'll put their link in the description. But the cherry on top, the double roll trigger, which poo-poo's all over your stock gun trigger, unless your stock gun happens to already have this Erm's trigger on it. But let me show you why. This is the stock Pathos trigger mech that came off my sniper. I didn't like the little nipple for shooting line wrap. I think all the new models have the side line release. Uh, like this one, so at least there's some progress there. The way this trigger works is fairly simple, common across most guns and triggers. On the rear of your Euro shaft, you've got a groove. Your trigger uses this groove to keep your shaft locked to it. If you were to look inside of this trigger, there is Focus. Get a little pin here. This is the bar, what I would call a drop bar, which would make sense. On the back of this bar right here, inside of there, is a little hump. It's the same shape as the one on the bottom of the shaft. When you squeeze, for when you're loaded, and you squeeze that trigger, that bar drops, and in this case, so does your shooting line nipple. It drops, allowing your shaft to release and hopefully in the direction that you're aiming it. This is called the sear. Um, there's a friction point, which is When you're loaded, when you pull your trigger, if you look real close here, you can see it slides along the back of your trigger, metal on metal, until it passes a certain point and it can drop. Now in comparison, here is an ERMS double roll trigger, direct replacement for the Pathos D'Angelo 2, I believe, 2 and 3. The way this trigger works is super clever. Unlike the other trigger, the release isn't a friction sear release and doesn't have a friction with the drop bar and the shaft groove. I didn't mention that a second ago, but as your shaft leaves this, this trigger, the pathos trigger, um, 
there is a little bit of friction contact that's also on the drop bar and this and it's not much it's probably negligible but it is there look at this is a the double row wing that out of the way. here's a blown up version of this arms double row mech regardless if it's a pathos direct replacement or not this is how their mechanisms work. So unlike the Pathos, who's got their drop bar, they've got the lump milled into the drop bar. The Erms has two separate wheels. And each of these wheels does their own function, of course. The part of the trigger that settles into the groove of your shaft is not milled into the bar though, which is this one right here. Instead, there's a roller wheel and it's on a, if you look at the trigger close, this wheel is free, focus, focus, is free to settle up and down. On the front of the drop bar is, a sec, is your second wheel. The trigger is milled with a point on it. Right here is an example. That's meant once you pull the trigger enough this wheel that's rolling along the back of the trigger gets to a certain point where it can fall you see I just fell that's why you get that beautiful crisp trigger release and because it rolls there is no friction with the trigger mech like the sear on a normal trigger and in the back wheel there's no because it's a roller, there's no friction with the shaft either. It's a super crisp release. Just listen to this thing. It is crisp, snappy. I love nerding out on good engineering. But because of that, if you can find a way to get these arms triggers into your gun, you should. So aside from all of that, this thing, uh, you could re you could put different color handles on. Obviously, this is, I got a green one too. Um, but the one the one thing that I did have to do to make this thing work on this Invictus was I had to sand. The diameter of the Invictus barrel is slightly smaller than this. Now I recommend if you are going to make this work, what you do is first you get a file. I wouldn't use anything power because you could take off too much too quickly and pull, pull your o-ring off and and file down all these little humps here first once you get those sanded off at that point um, take a, a piece of sandpaper high grits fine at first even till the end uh, maybe 80 grit uh, maybe 80 grits I don't know, 80 to 120 grit sandpaper. Wrap it around this thing and start spinning back and forth, back and forth. You never want to go too much. You want it to be as snug as it can be um, with that O-ring fitting in. Uh, the O-ring in the back will sit a little more out on the barrel, so it'll be a tighter fit. So if you're having trouble, if you can get the if you can get the trigger or the handle into the the gun without the O-ring, um, and it's it's a good fit. You could probably, a snug fit I should say, you could probably put this O-ring in the front pocket right here and it'll sit a little deeper and then, I mean this is your water stop, I mean this is your cork of your barrel so um, how this thing fits is kind of important but there is that O-ring there and you could add another if you want to make it a little better but once I had this thing sanded down, uh, once it corked in, the only thing I have to do after that because it's got um, just because of where the Omer's got this original, uh, which I recommend keeping this on here, this um, real support, I ran a new tapping screw into the side. Of course, you always want to tap your screws. Uh, when it has to do with how I got it level, or how I made sure that it was true and in line in the gun, I snapped a shaft in. And then as I adjusted on the barrel, I could see, focus, focus. 
Come on. Why won't you focus? Come on. There you go. So I could see that that, that shaft go back and forth right here, right? And to some extent, it is kind of a, a guess. Um, almost so, because once you're centered on this thing um, to where you can't even tell the difference, it's, you have trouble even measuring it, um, it's pretty close. Um, once you get it there, though, make sure you get it. You, you can make sure it's, it stays there. And at that point, you can tap your screw and set it in the side. Of course, use stainless. I avoid even 308. I prefer 316 stainless for everything, but that's my own issues. But hey, let me take a second to thank my sponsors. Me. If you dig the nitty gritty details like this, do the whole sub thing and let me know what you like me break down. Uh, my big wood invert EP build is a lot to edit. You saw a little bit of that in the intro of this. But it's butt loaded with details and I'll get to it when I get to it. I'm a father and uh, my time is limited. Most of it I put into diving. This is gonna go first. You put this into here to really easy. You just push it in and then it's in. And then second, we are gonna be putting this in. Make sure this one's at the end, but not too much at the end, like this. So we have these two that we're gonna do soon, but not now. They're like roller blades. Okay, we are gonna start this big thing right here. You can do it with any finger and then make sure it goes all the way to this line, the end. It's hard a little, but you'll get lots of practice. It's really hard. You guys are gonna probably get used to it soon. But I am never getting used to doing this, putting the string on. Like that. 